have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Hello and a happy Friday to you. I am Ken Reed and this is TV Guidance Counselor. I want to welcome you to the show. This is a fun little bonus mini episode. I was lucky enough to grab some time with Louise Post and Nina Gordon of the amazing Veruca Salt last week when they had a stop in Boston. They are an incredible band. I imagine you are familiar with their work or maybe checking out the show for the first time because you are a fan. Uh, If you are, welcome. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this little chat. Uh, This show has been going about a year and a half. Uh, I am a stand-up comedian based out of Boston, Massachusetts, and essentially the premise of the show is that I own every edition of TV Guide. Someone goes through some old classic issues of TV Guide, mostly from the 70s and 80s and sometimes 90s, but sometimes we go outside that, and we discuss what they watched growing up, and it's a great time. I always enjoy talking to people about this sort of thing, and this episode is really no exception. Uh, Louise and Nina could not have been nicer, and as I said, I've always enjoyed their music, uh, and I assume you do too. If you have not heard it for some bizarre, strange reason, I highly recommend that you check it out. They have a brand new album out called Ghost Notes that came out a couple weeks ago. It is very, very good, and they were excellent playing at the Paradise in Boston. Uh, I don't know if they have any more tour dates posted yet, but uh, if they do, uh, I'm sure they will soon. You should definitely check it out, and I will share it on uh, tvguidancecouncil.com and on our Facebook page and all that, because you will want to see them. Now, on to this episode. Uh, We recorded this on the tour bus before their show in Boston, as I said, talking about some great 70s TV. Uh, We got a couple of scoops, I think. Uh, There's a few things in here that I hadn't heard before about the band, uh, especially related to TV. So I think you will enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's extra bonus episode of TV Guidance Counselor with my guests, Louise Post and Nina Gordon of Veruca Salt. Gordon, Louise Post of Veruca Salt. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you guys so much for doing this. We are uh, pre-show here in Boston. I've, I've plied you with a stack of, of TV guides based on my approximate guess, guesstimation at your ages. Uh, <laughs> we're in heaven. You I think really I nailed it. it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've got like mid-70s here and you were talking mostly Saturday mornings and a variety shows came up. There was some stuff, anything that really jumped out immediately. Oh my God. I'm, I'm all about the prime time. I mean, I'm just, I, I don't know what my mother was thinking when she let me watch all this TV, but right. I watched it all. Okay? Yeah. Did you have cable or anything or were you just network? Cable? There was, there was no, no such thing, thing as cable. Yeah. You both grew up in the Midwest? Yes. Okay. Well, Nina partially in the East Coast and then Midwest. Right. So I moved away from New York right when cable started yeah, in New York and we moved to Chicago. Yeah. And yeah. slowly made it. <laughs> we moved to Chicago where they didn't have cable in the city for like until the mid 80s right, or right. late 80s because you know. they had like pipes from 1851 uh-huh. so they couldn't get <laughs> uh-huh. so you're watching the networks and and you're watching primetime all the time with your mom and you're like my mom should not have let me watch this stuff or just that no volume. i mean no i'm grateful that she did because i have such fond memories of these shows like i'm looking at happy days and laverne and shirley and so all the gary marshall stuff absolutely and then mash yeah. Um, one of the great shows. A fantastic show. And weirdly time. a show that ki- a lot of kids watched. But if you said now, oh, show this 10-year-old uh, comedy about the Korean War, you'd be like, I don't know if that's appropriate. Right. Uh, exactly. I found, I found that heavy. so depressing. Just the sound of that theme song. Oh, yeah. Well, it's called Suicide is Painless, which, I mean, is right. one of the most depressing titles for a theme song. Right. And it's interesting that you found it depressing because you have often described yourself as a child wanting to go there, like wanting to feel the pain wanting to experience it and like gravitating towards things that made you feel and we've talked about that like how as a kid yeah, we want to feel so in- <gasps> no this was a series based on look it says based on the hit movie so they tried to make a series based on the oh movie we've God. talked yeah. about which was sunshine which louise and i totally bonded on you know hundreds of years later about <laughs> how as young girls we were just completely riveted by these stories of disease and like children losing their mothers do you oh, know yeah. how often i think of that movie i do too I it, think I of it too. because it's dark as 
Didn't Anything? she die? She died of ovarian cancer or Was something. It? Yes. Yeah. The seventies were a dark time. So for dark. Things aimed at children. So dark. But I didn't realize. So it says Cliff D. Young as a widower with a child to raise and a living to make. Sunshine. And he rode a motorcycle. Right? Yeah. Remember? Well, it was the 70s. I had the book, It was the too. evil Knievel oh. era. I think of it all the time, and I think about that relationship between a daughter and a father in relation to in my daughter and her dad. Yeah. And I think I want them, of course, I want to stick around for it. Right, right. But I, want I don't want to die just for this. <laughs> I want them to have that closeness. Yeah. You know? Have you showed them that movie? Oh, oh God, God, no. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do again. this without the death. <laughs> <laughs> Except every Disney movie is about parents, die, you know. Oh yeah, the parents die in every that, movie. That like primal anyway. childhood oh, fear yeah. of just yeah. being orphaned. I wonder if a lot of the stuff uh, they hadn't quite figured out how to narrow cast directly to children yet. So they were kind of writing it just. Some of it might have been ignorance where they didn't know how to make shows for kids that made money. <laughs> but well, they were except for on Saturday mornings. Right. 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 I don't know. And it wasn't such a crazy, careful world. And it wasn't such a world of litigation. And there wasn't right. there wasn't enough concern, for sure, about what children should be exposed to. And yet, there was, because it w- there was less censorship, there was more for us to watch and you know cry over right i mean some of that too was because you only had the four networks so they had to make stuff that appealed to a whole family and families oh. watch tv together fair enough whereas now you know your kid can watch whatever they want on their phone uh, alone at any time Not pretty on much my phone. i have no <laughs> idea who beverly archer is and i don't remember a show called we've got each other do you that no. was a very short-lived show that's Who's i think 1971 she? or 70 oh yeah no, we were she was one of those people that showed up on game shows a lot like she would be on like what's my line okay. and all that okay. hollywood square yeah right, like and you're like Russell i don't know who this somebody. person is <laughs> outside of this show right oh louise look there's um the grinch look oh oh, oh hold on you got the Grinch. is this a christmas issue yeah the grinch look. Oh my god. There Did you ever are. see Halloween is Grinch Night, the sequel that's to the Grinch? Just, oh, it's a, yeah. That's what it just was. I don't actually remember that. It's so disappointing. It is nowhere near as good. Jonathan Winters is a pumpkin head. Well, we all know that. She just she wasn't even reading that. That's just the statement. And that here's Sean Anna. Something about Sean Anna. Remember Sean Anna? Oh, they had a variety show. Oh, do I? Oh, yeah. do you? The fifth <laughs> Bowser from Sean Anna had a variety show that was uh, produced by Gary Marshall, I think. Of, was it really? Yeah. Oh it my was, uh, god. It was not the best show, but it was that weird. The seventies was when nostalgia kind of was created, so you had that. 50s nostalgia for oh the first God. time and then it went in the 20 year cycles so was that really the first time yeah in the yeah, 70s with happy days and Greece exactly and it was always mm-hmm. the 20 year cycles teenagers were basically invented in the 50s before that you like at 17 got married and were an adult right and then they were like right. these kids can be uh you know we can they can spend money and they'll go see movies about monsters right so the Crazy. the nostalgia of the baby boomers started in the 70s and in the 80s there was 60s nostalgia 90s it was all 70s uh early 2000s it was 80s it's very very weird Right, and now, now it's, it's the 90s, it's and the here 90s we are. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to take a picture of Patty the Prayer Doll. I will. Patty the Prayer Look, Doll. Look, here's the girl with the bad rep, James at 15. I Lance love James Kerwin at 15. and Terry Nunn. Terry oh. Nunn of Berlin. No. She was a teen actress before no. Berlin. Yes, yeah. <laughs> She plays. There a, she yes, is. She's beautiful, really funny, uh, great actress, and she never really acted that much after that. Oh my God, where is my brother? I have yeah. to spend a little bit of time with these books with my brother. <laughs> Absolutely. She that James at Fifteen was such a great show, shot in Boston and set in Boston, and was sort of a, a precursor to things like My So-Called Life and and Freaks and Geeks, and didn't talk down to teenagers. It was oh, well. one of the first like dramatic teenager shows. Hmm. Uh, I loved that show. It still holds up. But yeah, Terry Does Nunn. Does it? Yeah, Terry Nunn has a bad reputation Terry about sleeping Nunn. around. That is crazy. Right. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that I am currently staring at Bionic Woman and the Six Million Dollar Man. Yes. Um, both of which were very important television shows for me. Were you big on the Bigfoot episodes? That seems to be the ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, not so much. <laughs> no, that was not my gig. <laughs> um, I loved the, f- I mean, I loved the fact that she emerged from the show, from the $6 million man. Yeah, and got her know? own spinoff. And that she was the spinoff and that she was the girlfriend and that she also was electronic, that she was bionic. Yeah. And I mean, I worshipped her. Of course, I thought Lee Majors was a babe. Yeah. Well, he's a handsome man. Well, yeah. And <laughs> she was so beautiful. Yeah. She was so fresh and natural and smart and strong. <laughs> and she have was you like seen it recently? Was she smart? 
Yeah, she's fairly she smart. Was? Jamie Summers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she's got the she's got the bionic brain. She could solve. Uh, she oh, could yeah. do it with brawn. She could do it with brains. It was Jamie oh, Summers. She seemed like well read. Yeah, I think so because <laughs> she probably could read more often than other people with bionic eyes. It you may can have been Lindsay Wagner she who was well read, but it came possible. through. Okay? Yeah, it certainly did. And I mean, I had to watch that show, or if I didn't, if I didn't. If I came to fourth grade without having watched that show, right. I wouldn't be able to play with all my friends right, because we had to reenact the entire show. Who Every made the best sound effect of the bionic oh sound? Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, I, I, I don't remember. It could have been me. It could have been my friend Brookie or yeah. my friend Julia. Wait, did you have siblings? Girl? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was, were you the youngest or oldest? I or? am second to youngest. Okay. I have a younger brother. Sort of like, we're sort of like Irish twins. He okay. came soon after me. I have an older brother, Kenny. And I have an older sister, Nancy, and my younger brother, Eric, and I were, um, we were partners in crime with television. We right. watched all the same stuff. So you didn't have to, like, negotiate for your favorite shows. That's always... Oh, yeah. Jim um, and I did. We yeah. had one... There was a phase where we had one TV when we were little, and at 6 o'clock on the East Coast, 6 p.m., uh, Star Trek was on at the same time as the Brady Bunch. Oh, that... And... Civil Wars have started Yeah, we had a really rough time. We and obviously, you were the years. Star Trek fan, and he was well, the Brady Bunch fan. I wasn't. He was, <laughs> and... Um, but Star Trek was an hour. Brady Bunch was only half an hour. So sometimes the compromise was he got to watch half an hour. Right. Unless it was the trouble with Tribbles, in which case I You're wanted to watch it. Yeah, because yeah, it was about like cute little cuddly. It's funny if to this day he's still only seen the last half hour of every Star Trek no, episode. No, no, he's seen them all. <laughs> he's I think he even went to a couple of conventions, but he wouldn't want me to tell you that. <laughs> I can cut <laughs> that out. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Good thing you didn't. So you guys, when you the first time I remember seeing you guys was on TV, I think it was either Letterman or Saturday Night Live. I forget. It was probably Saturday Night Live. Or was it 94? Mm. Maybe. We was definitely not do Letterman. Letterman. Yeah, was we didn't do oh, Letterman because Louise. Um, it was one of the late night shows. Disc. Oh my God, we were, we were slated to do yeah, that. Yeah, it was scheduled. Uh, we had to cancel because you slipped a disc. I have repressed that. Oh, memory. sorry to bring up such a bad memory. Um, um, but it was one of the, I forget the late night show then. Or maybe it was the Tonight Show or something like that. We played Saturday Night Live. Yes. Yeah. Sting was the other. Was it, it was two musical guests, right? It Sting was, yeah. And he bumped us because he wanted to play a song. So we only got to play one song. Oh my God. Did they? Yeah. When did they break that to you? Like... In between the dress rehearsal and the live show. And the thing that's crazy is that we may have the honor of being the only band. I heard somebody told me that Third Eye Blind went on and played only one song, but that was apparently because they sucked so bad that <laughs> we're gonna cut the other they song. Had we're gonna write a sketch right now to yeah, rehearse second song. But in our case, we were slated to do two songs, as is every band yeah. and has every band for the last forty years. And um, between the the uh, dress rehearsal and the live show Sting I guess went to Lauren Michaels and was like I think I'd like to play a song or whatever he said I can't do his accent that sounds like Sting um no it sounded, Sting. Sounded, yeah right <laughs> um and so he played an acoustic song totally impromptu and we got bumped for Jeez. our other song I mean I guess of all the people to be bumped for Sting is okay. -ish. Well, um, here's the thing he, I mean I grew up with his poster on my wall I saw the Synchronicity tour yep um I was a huge fan, and you know, after Lee Majors, it was all about Sting. <laughs> Lee Majors okay. and Sting—that's that's pretty good <laughs> pedigree. Um, however, I mean, however, right. he should have known. We were a young band. Give you a chance. Like he should have known that yeah. that was not. Sting I don't has know. enough. <laughs> Sting. Exactly, he maybe, had enough. Maybe it was a song he started twenty years ago that was just tantric, and he wanted to finish it. Exactly. It had just taken that. It was long the one about barley. Of Remember that oh, one? Yes, of Fields course. of barley. Fields I'm still of waiting for my letter of apology. Of apology. It'll come. It'll come. So, I, did you watch music on TV growing up? Because you didn't have MTV. But well, let's talk about the monkeys. Yes, the monkeys was seminal. I think for everybody. Oh yeah, right. That show was so important because the music was great, and it also I think taught us all sort of a history of of show business because it was very knowing and winking and and went fourth wall breaking and yeah, oh, I mean, funny and sweet. Wouldn't you say that it made you want to be in a band? It made me want to be in a band, and it well, also I think it was like my first real crush oh, was me David too. Jones. My first David love. Jones. David yeah. Jones was your. Yeah. See, I was always a, a Mike Nesmith guy. I mean, my not kids, a crush way. But so my daughter loves Mickey Dolenz most okay. of all. I I push the monkeys on them all the time, and um, I met him a couple months ago. He can't, he weirdly watched me do stand up. It was very intimidating. Was he crotchety? Because no, I've he heard was, he was he was not so kind. I mean, I think he was uh, had been lubricated a bit uh, to enjoy comedy for the evening. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> 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 somewhat good in mood. But, you know, he's earned the right to be crotchety, as has Sting. That's I mean, true. They, you know, these Sting guys wasn't exactly crotchety. 
Uh, really, he was I thought just, he was a, a was tiny he, bit crotchety. Was he a little crotchety? He, he called us Veronica on. Salt. Yeah. Veronica. If anyone should know Veronica Salt, it would be someone who a grew up in the north one, of England. One would think. Oh look how pretty God. Sybil Shepherd was. My she is God. one of the most stunning women look of all time. Look how gorgeous she looks yeah. here when she, she was going to be on the Mike Douglas show. I love that she has a b- little oh, baby wow. fat. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's, so. she looks amazing. That was probably the last picture show era that she was on there. Right. Um, and she's someone who did all these dramatic roles in, in films and then in the 80s was really funny on Moonlighting. It, you did, totally. I feel like we don't get that as much anymore where you have someone, you know, a film actress or actor who then goes on TV and does really crazy comedy stuff. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of exciting. This so is the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the monkeys was something that you was like a first musical introduction. I, oh I, my god, the songs are great. Yeah, they you know? really are. They're and great. In the second season, they would be like, "We have five minutes left. Here's Tim Buckley." <laughs> right. <laughs> like here's Frank Zappa. <laughs> right. It was such a weird introduction for a show that was sort of weirdly aimed at kids. Such a cool show, and I think yeah, really like my heart hurt. I love Davy Jones so much. Yeah. Me too. You know. Me too. And you must have loved the Brady Bunch episode that he. Oh sang God, yeah. In. Well, yeah. you know the the crazy thing is the house that I live in now. We just moved like four months ago. Yeah. In Los Angeles, was the house that. Well, first of all, Bella Lugosi lived there, but that's not the exciting part for me. For me, the exciting part is the writer who wrote the Davy Jones episode and the Marsha, Marsha, Marsha episode. Oh, so a genius. Lived in our house for 30 years. And down in our guest room, that was his office, and that's where he wrote Marsha, Marsha, Marsha and Davy Jones. That's pretty exciting. You could just go in there and just absorb the magic. Yeah. You know, we could do a show like The Monkees, and I don't mean star in it. And we could just make that happen. Yeah. Let's do it. You should do it. Watch out. Girl, don't you walk on me, got <laughs> things to say. Well, the interesting thing, too, is I think, and I always ask when I have musicians on, like, what their favorite TV theme song is, because for kids who can't buy their own music yet, uh, they, the music that they first love is a theme song. And one of the reasons I found, discovered talking to people that they watch a show every week is, is to hear their favorite song at the beginning of the show every week, which is a phenomenon probably lost. It's so true. Although, isn't Orange is the New Black? Like, doesn't that have a... That's Regina Spector. Yeah. That's a good song. People like that song. Yeah, but this was, you know... But yeah, it's true. Like, the theme songs... Oh, the theme songs were great. They were so yeah. important. And then with the advent of Seinfeld that came the doom doom. Yes. You know? Well, slap bass ruins everything. Well, slap bass. Well, <laughs> no, but it was also about, like, not wanting to waste time, like, precious advertising yeah. minutes on a theme song. Well, so shows and also shorter now, too. Getting right into the yeah. show so that you don't get bored and switch the channel. A 30-minute sitcom now without commercials is 20 minutes. Up from in throughout the 70s and 80s, a 30-minute sitcom without commercials was 25 minutes. That's right. So we actually have five more minutes of commercials. Yeah, so they can't they can't waste a whole minute on a theme song. No way. Especially one can that tells us the setup. Can we talk about Carol Burnett, the Carol Burnett show? Did you watch oh, it yeah. as much as I did? Absolutely. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, my God. She was the best. The best. Tim Conway. And, of course, we all waited for them to crack up. I loved Mother. I didn't like yeah. the spinoff. Oh, Mama's I, Family might be Mama's my least favorite sitcom of oh, all time. It was time. terrible. It was but really Mama awful. was the best. It and was on, while she was in the Carol Burnett yes. show, right? Well, the pedigree of that was so much better. And then that show was uh, a show that was on a network for one season. They canceled it and went into first-run syndication. And those are the extra cheap ones where nobody from Carol Burnett was involved. Rula uh, Clanahan wasn't on anymore. And it was just like, this is the worst this oh is yeah that was a bummer yeah. it petered out in a big way didn't it yeah but absolutely. what about um let's talk about um uh, eight is enough Super Loved eight it. Is enough fan. can anyone sing the theme to eight is enough i, I don't the theme to eight is enough never stuck with me i was no. actually talking about oh, this wait, the other day was, was it just it? musical or was there a song no, oh no there was a song how did it go Eight, eight is, is enough. enough. I remember it was very like da, 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 yeah. for living life with joy or something. Yeah. When I was very eight young, I used to confuse enough. eight is enough with the Partridge Family all the time. Oh, I don't Louise, know. Louise, you look like um, you've kind of got the haircut of that one cute Lori Partridge. No, no, no. Susan Day? On eight is enough. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, the oldest no, daughter. There was, there was maybe Susan. Susan. Somebody had the hair, right? Yeah. yeah. That show, I think Ruben Kincaid. No, Ruben Kincaid wasn't it is enough, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, no. Ruben Kincaid was no, Partridge, Van Partridge family. Wasn't it a Van Patten? Yes, it was. It, it was Dick Van Patten Dick Van was Pat. the dad. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love Dick Van Patten. You know who else? And I Willie love? Ames. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and the little boy in oh. um in uh, Adam Rich. Adam Rich. Yeah. Had Adam some Rich looks later. so much like my little brother Eric. Oh, that really? I really identified with that show because he looked like my little brother. Yeah, I think I that's too. Him. People identify their family or their ideal version of a family with a show that ends up being their. Well, yeah, I think I wanted him as my dad. Um, and you know, along those lines of other, he wasn't a t- 
dad. Um, was he a dad? I don't remember. But um, he, the, the person who did remind me of my dad was Bob Newhart because okay. my dad is a psychiatrist. Oh, very right. And so I felt like he was kind of a, ver- a TV version of my dad. Right. And also a show set in Chicago. <laughs> well, I grew up in St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Okay. So yeah. not far, but I wasn't familiar with Chicago. Did but you ever share that with your dad that he reminded you of Bob Newhart? I may have. I don't remember. But my dad would like we were not a family that watched TV. Okay. I'm my dad rarely watched television. He was a reader. Okay. And my mom didn't watch it either. It was really just me and my brother. I can't even remember my older brother or sister watching it with us, really. Were your parents um, against it, or it just wasn't for them? Like, they didn't have rules like, it's it'll rot your brain or anything like that? No. I know. Well, I just think my dad had too much to read that yeah. to, to sit down and watch TV with, with us. Um, it might have just sort of been a babysitter, you know? Yeah. I, that's true for many of us. I think yeah. people our age and, and, and sort of a little bit older, that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have very strict rules about TV in my house. I have a daughter. Right. And like all of my friends with more than one kid are sort of like, yeah, if you you'll have two, like you'll get over that real quick. <laughs> Is there anything you watched as a kid that you feel like you have to expose your daughter to or your children to, to like try to pr- not program them, but be like, this is important. To indoctr- indoctrinate them. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, um, I forced, I love Lucy on them. I forced the monkeys on them. How did they go over? They love the monkeys. Yeah. Ivy, my daughter, went through like a short Isle of Lucy phase, not yeah. long enough. Um, <laughs> what about you? Sh- you play, um, you showed them the Brady Bunch. Yeah, they love the Brady Bunch. Yeah. They love it. They still do. Um, I'd like to have them watch the Dick Van Dyke show. That was one of my very, very favorites. Yes, but a good gateway show is the Walnuts uh, episode with the space aliens, oh, the yeah, dream yeah, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Children um, respond well Twilo, to that. Yes. Uh, Planet Twilo, yes. Hang by Your Thumbs. Exactly, yes, because it's yep. a strange one. I tried to get Lila to watch um, Mr. Rogers, and unfortunately, I started with black and white. Oh, she just turned off. I mean, that was a big mistake, because now she's just like, no, right. no, it no. And wrong. plus, there's a Daniel Tiger spinoff, which is cartoon yes. and much more enticing to a small child of this day and age. Than a hand puppet? <laughs> yeah, than a hand puppet. That's not Daniel Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> copies of things like this here i'm seeing andrea mccardle in her film debut judy garland's story how do i get to see that it was on nbc there's a few ways so i in one of my other odd hobbies i collect like beta and vhs tapes of old tv broadcasts and then i've i'll convert them to dvd and i've had that for years so i have thousands and thousands of hours of tv that particular one i don't have but i could probably hunt it down for you if if you'd like to see it but a lot of people before that used to go to the um, Museum of Television Radio I, and yeah, I once and went there with Mary Libby. She and I went because we decided this was like pre-internet and we loved Dolly Parton so much and we were like, we have to hear Dolly's speaking voice. Like, I want to hear her right. speaking voice because she's so adorable. And so we went to the Museum of Broadcasting that's in Los Angeles, Los Angeles yep. and we just asked them for the, the tape. They gave us like... Uh, Dolly Parton on Johnny Carson yep. and we watched it over and over. In the just pre-YouTube days, that's yeah. what you had to do. Yeah. She has maybe my favorite Christmas special of all time. It's from 1990. It's called Dolly's Christmas Down Home and it's all her at Dollywood. Oh, just fun. being. Com- she comes out dressed as a reindeer with no explanation at one point. <laughs> she makes candles with like a guy who's so Southern I can't understand a word that he says. <laughs> she has all her sisters with her and oh, they're, they're like happy to be on TV but you can see them like secretly angry <laughs> that they're like, you know, Perfect this is their dad. moment. It is, it is the most incredible thing, and the sweaters are just glorious. Oh my yeah, god, it is fantastic. Her. She Love had the last really great variety show on TV in 1988. She had a summer replacement series variety show, yeah. and it was a true variety show, and it was really the last one that I can think of in you know almost 30 years for a format that was huge. I mean, that's where most people saw music. <laughs> when Louise and I were first, like when Virga Salt was first taking off. Um, I guess it was like in 94, 95, um, we were asked to meet with the Carsey Warner people okay, yeah. uh, to meet with Marcy Carsey. And I, I don't think Tom Warner was in the room, but yeah. Marcy Carsey was. And they wanted us to do... Um, host a variety show. To host a variety really? show to compete with Saturday Night Live yes. on Fox. This yeah. was pre-Mad TV. It's what yeah. ended up being Mad TV, they I think. She TV, and then Roseanne had yeah. a show she before that. She yeah. TV, yep. that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So they wanted us to host, it. host a to show. front the show. That's yeah. very weird. Okay. We can't believe we said no. I know. It was you just so weren't dumb. into it? Or you're like, we're not, we're not, well, we're, we're musicians. We were just emerging as a band, right? Yeah. We were, we're musicians. We're not 
TV people. You know, we didn't right. want to like, like we didn't know how that would affect our path, really, our trajectory right. in, into a respected, um, you know, respected a, band. Yeah, you didn't want to end up being the Heights. Well, right, <laughs> and you know, we, um, I had the idea. We we discussed like what kind of a show we could do, right. and we thought it would be super cool to do like the Hugh Hefner Hollywood After Dark right. type of show where we'd sit and just like right. have parties. Welcome to our house. Introduce like, you know, invite great musicians and have them come and everybody, everyone would be drinking and smoking and doing drugs and out. we'd yeah. all just be hanging out. And Which is a format they did in the UK throughout the 90s right. and we had nothing like that here yeah. since the early 70s. It's yeah. very, very weird. That makes sense that Casey Warner produced it because they did Roseanne the TV show and then she hosted that sketch show before they got mad TV. There you go. It's that was going to be us. So I would have liked to have seen that. I know. Yeah. I, I would have liked to have seen it too. There's still time. Maybe yeah, we're thinking we're going to do we got, we got to do something like that. Yeah. Yep. You could do half monkeys half a variety <laughs> hang out at our house show well you can hang out at the monkey's house basically <laughs> did you ever see the monkey's reunion movie from 1997 no. No. mike nesmith wrote it and it's a special they did and it is so crazy the premise is they've been living in that house for 30 years oh no so they're all old in there but like a monster comes to the door and they answer and he's like hey guys didn't we do this one already and he's like yeah it was episode uh 491 we did this one and so he's like oh we did this already sorry <laughs> wow that does not door. sound great it doesn't sound great yeah, at all. It's, uh, it's interesting it? to see. So I know you guys uh, have to get on stage in a moment, so your your time is short. Uh, I, I just want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to do this. Is is there anything you watch now? <laughs> you were saying it's mostly reality shows and stuff, right? Oh, no. Oh, don't no. We don't watch reality. Shows. We just meant hoarders. Uh, the oh, only hoarders. show I'll yeah. watch is hoarders. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> That's it. For me. You know, the weird thing is um, you gave us these TV guides. Of, for me, what was like the golden era of television, and then I didn't watch TV. I didn't watch TV all through the 80s and right. I didn't watch it through the 90s. I really didn't. You probably had a social life. Well, and yeah, I was busy. Are you catching up on any of that stuff that you missed back then? It doesn't appeal to me. Really? No. You know, so w when we were, Nina, when Nina and I were playing a show um, in the 90s in LA, uh, as it happened, Justine Bateman was there. Oh, wow. And I, uh, you know, I, I was... I didn't live in LA and so I blundered and said I didn't know any better than to say haven't we met right, you know, like right. now that I live there I realize you know, and she you wanted you to say weren't say you that. in satisfaction <laughs> that was satisfaction. <laughs> okay but well, I have a question for you yes absolutely what are these there's a in I don't know what year this is I think it's oh 71 that's yeah. why I don't know it the sausage the mouse Clever Elsie, a brand new kind of family entertainment, premieres this September. The Golden Goose. Oh, I and think. And Tom Tit Tat. Yeah, Tom Tit Tat. Uh, I believe these were Disney pilots for live action shows. So on Sunday nights, they did The Wonderful World of Disney oh, every yeah. Sunday night for years. Yeah. And Disney was at a real low in the early 70s with these live action shows. And they were trying to branch into more like uh, sitcom territory. And so I believe it was a huge failure of the oh, Disney got it, Corporation. Got it, got it. <laughs> but Tom Tit Tat, the Tom world could have been right. Okay, yeah, because I never heard of that. Yeah, I don't think anyone has fond memories of Tom oh, Tit Tat. This is so fun. <laughs> All right, we didn't talk about All in the Family. A, a show that, again, heavy issues for a family time. Is just super yeah. heavy, but I loved, loved, loved that show. Yeah, that show holds up. It's such a great show. It's always interesting to me to hear people whose like, dads watched it the wrong way. <laughs> that Archie oh Bunk God. is great. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> when Nina and I split up, it was what we call now the, hi the heinous hiatus. Right. And I watched, I ordered All in the of All in the Family <laughs> oh and my God. all of Sanford and Son. Wow. And I watched every single episode. Did it wow. help? Yes, I did. But you didn't go to Achi Bunker's place, though. I No, I didn't. I just, I, um, it was like so incredibly comforting to me. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I just love those shows so much. Yeah. And I watched them all. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> They're great. Well, thank you guys so much. I don't want to eat up too much of your time, but I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, it was great to talk to you guys. So much fun. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. What a fun conversation that was. I, I really could have talked to them forever. It was a lot of fun. They, they couldn't be nicer, as I said. Uh, and 
are an incredible band. So definitely pick up Ghost Notes. Uh, you can get it on iTunes, Amazon, probably a local record store if you still have one of those. Uh, it's a very, very good record. And as I said, they were amazing live. So if you have not seen them, if you have the opportunity, definitely, definitely go out and see them. Uh, this is Friday. We don't normally do special editions on Friday, but you never know when we do. We have new episodes every Wednesday. But if you enjoyed the show, please, please, please subscribe on iTunes and rate and review the show. Uh, as I said, new episodes every Wednesday, but occasionally I get an opportunity to talk to someone and we will have bonus episodes on Fridays, Saturdays. You never know. So make sure you subscribe. Also, I love hearing from listeners. You can contact me at tvguidancecounselor at gmail.com or can at iCanRead.com. We also have a Facebook page. You can search TV Guidance Counselor and join the community of fans. They're discussing old television. I don't know why I said that like that, but it seemed appropriate. Uh, you can also tweet to me at TV Guidance uh, or at Kenneth W. Reed if you want to just bypass uh, the TV Guidance Counselor Twitter handle for some strange reason. And as I said, we'll have a brand new episode next Wednesday. Uh, I'll I'll give you a little scoop here. Uh, my guest is Janine Garofalo, um, who is fantastic. So make sure you tune in Wednesday for that episode, and we'll see you again then on TV Guidance Counselor. Have you showed them that movie? Oh, oh God, God, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>